Hey, what's going on YouTube? So this video is just going to be a quick uh, demonstration of the PAR readings that I got um, from the popular Kessel A80. Uh, the one that I'm going to be testing today is the Tuna Blue. Um, I do not have the Tuna Sun. Basically started off by uh, filling up um, a 10 gallon uh, JBJ nano tank courtesy of CJ's Aquarium. If you don't know who he is, go check him out. The tank measured, I believe, 23 inches long or so and 10 inches high by 10 inches deep. As far as the spectrum, I just kind of put the color at, um, in the middle and the intensity I put at max to kind of see what this light can pump out. Now these readings aren't going to be, um, you know, for me and I tried to do my best to keep, you know, less ripples in the tank. But as you can see, there is some light spillage off the back and it kind of gives you a good idea of what the spread is. To do the PAR readings, I used an Apogee uh, MQ210 PAR meter uh, that I got from BRS, you know, about, I don't know, six months ago or so. And, um, you know, it's not the crazy expensive 5, 10, or whatever one it is, but it's, uh, you know, about 5%, I think, is what they told me, the difference in the readings you'll get. So there might be a little bit of fluctuation, but it's a general overview of what we get. At the surface that you saw, um, I got a max reading, I think it was about a 157, then kind of fell off to, uh, like, 154. And like I said, there are a few ripples in the tank, and then finally it kind of settled out around 140, 145. I continued on by taking um, you know, readings of the middle tank, the left and the right side. All the readings on the PAR meter, uh, as you see right here, those are the readings that I basically held the um, sensor directly below the light, you know, in the top, the middle, and the bottom of the tank. Um, at the end of this video, I'll show you kind of the sides where those PAR readings kind of fell um, and where they stayed at. So for the middle, I'm looking at about 121 underneath the light. Continued on by taking, you know, more readings on the bottom um, against the glass, kind of where your sand bed would be, of the left, the right, and um, those readings came back, you know, around 50 or so, I believe is what it kind of stayed at, and um, and then eventually, you know, as I moved it over to the corners a little bit, it started going down to 35, 25, and uh, so on, but directly under the light, you're getting about 40, 50 par-ish around there. Like I said, there were some ripples in the tank from moving the wand around, so those are going to be kind of the fluctuations. But it gives you a general idea of what you're looking at. That being said, everything, you know, I wanted to test everything. So I ended up turning the spectrums to, you know, full white, to all blues, to intensity, this, that. And just kind of really get a good thing. The nice thing about this light is I didn't find any difference in the PAR readings regardless of where I turned the color spectrum. Which I think is something that Kessel you know, it's kind of known for. You can set the color that you want that looks good to your eye and you know that your PAR readings aren't, you know, necessarily changing all the time. So at the end of the day, this is kind of what I came up with. Um, now, like I said, these might be, you know, 5% five, 5 off or so um, with using the Apogee 210 instead of the very expensive 510, I believe, which is a full spectrum sensor. Um, but according to BRS, the 210 um, is about 5% difference in the readings. Um, so these numbers will stay pretty, you know, standard, I think. But like I said, there is some spillage that you see. So could the surface be a little bit higher? Absolutely. You know, this is just kind of a general idea of what I found using the, the, uh, the PAR meter that I had. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up and happy reefing. Cheers.